Hello, welcome back. Uh, yeah, I've just been wanting to play more Beacon Pine because I just want to know what happens, you know? I want to figure out how to get out of this mess, and so far, it's not looking so good. I, it looks like we're close to the top of the tree here, unless it, like, keeps branching out. And we still have quite a bit to go on this other side. So, I think the last one we have at the moment is this flight one where Mr. Care is confronting us with his army of clones. So let's just jump right into it and see what we find out today. Uh, all right, so yeah, Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left, flight. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left, flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branch. Okay, that worked a lot better than the first time. Whoa, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Care, we'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. See ya, jerks. They just batman out of there. Fine. We know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5 Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. Oh, so this is next to our treehouse? That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost them. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. Okay. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that this is here. What's the readout? It's in just above 258 Kelvin. That's a bit da uh, that's down a bit from last time. Should we report to Mr. Care? Meh, still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but for now it's but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium can cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. What's all this? Hard to say with all this snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out the letters under there. What town could this even be? There couldn't be another town this deep into Weep Wood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. Uh, how am I supposed to... I don't really have anything to throw at it, I don't think. Oh, wait, there was a little... Oh, I can throw a snowball. Oh, okay, so it is another town that's like copy of the town. That doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How do we get back here? I guess we got turned around? Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. There's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at before. It was cold too. Maybe all this leads to one source. You think it's related? What the hell is going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. Okay. Yeah, I guess they must have taken them to like a copy of the town when they brought them back from having 
cleaned up the town, or so they said. Luca, Luca, are you there? Almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. <laughs> it's that bozo care. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. No need to be rude. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks! A young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy, you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father. But your mom sure was a handful. Well, that was rude. We gotta keep moving. Look at all this toxic, toxic sludge. This stuff look familiar to you? Oh, I'm getting my voices mixed up. <laughs> it looks like the barrel near the puddle I uh, shoved me into. Yeah. It's all frozen. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Iggy, it's gonna be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. Huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. Numb. The way the snow covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah. Uh, I haven't said time to say it, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Maybe I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my temper. Sarcastically to his half -deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course! Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things, trying to get into fights. It's something to do. You're an asshole because you're bored. Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Roller are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Perfect Luca Fanhorn. With his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet, and even she already likes you. You have Tish. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? I get that impression. Hmm. It must be raining out here. Definitely. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. 
Tomorrow, we'll get to the bottom of all of this. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What did you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Hmm? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to the worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. Dang, that kid must be real lonely if, uh, <laughs> this is what it took for him to make a friend. Luca was swaying with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Oh, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories. All warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. Oh my god, I can't handle any more emotional trauma right now. Oh my god. That's unfortunate. I don't think we've seen this person yet. Get your hands off me! It's like a little mouse, a little field mouse. Just what do you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. 
We were sleeping minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Eh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you. When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. You big headed, scarfy necked furball. Hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a, like a Nat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait. Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are? You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. Oh my god, this one likes to talk in riddles. Alright, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. You know, the music in the background kind of reminds me of uh, the Age of Empires song. Um, like the Age of Empires 2 song. Uh, it, it just uh, vaguely sounds like it to me for some reason. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn the patient thin, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. And Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate and weep wood, or we teleported to some alternate universe, or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kara and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. Well, we uh, found our way home. <laughs> You both grew up here, but the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair, but a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You need a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Luca and Iggy looked around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. Why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty? The best one can do is to uncover... Narrowed his eyes, furrowed his brow, and uttered... The source. Why'd you say the source like that? Why indeed? Oh my god, this mouse is not being helpful. It's all ridiculous. There's no way they could. If this really is home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through the Weep Wood. Chapter 6 The Source The Source Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. 
Okay. He gave Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rolo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest, but right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. Did they move his dad's grave? He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone, in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what did I- what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? He finally noticed the tears falling in Luca's eyes. And the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We gotta hide. Two hundred fifty-nine Kelvin. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said two fifty-nine. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who love them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. Down to scoop up a snowball and lobs it playfully. Hey! Don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. Wait. What? Ha, <laughs> weirdo. Why are they talking like kids? Who are they? Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Hey! Who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover. Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn. You're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Karen and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever is at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Should we be ashamed if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. What if it's too big to smash? I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. <laughs> We're gonna make it right by destroying things. Let's do this. Okay, well, we already know where that is, right? Because we got all the other bad endings. So let's just run over there. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Help's on the way. Where's Rollo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Well, do I? Aw, oh, shucks, now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. I mean, he does seem like a crazy person. <laughs> Wait a minute. If this is the original town, that means... If he darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously, he emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I, uh came into possession of some premium-grade fireworks. 
Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Oh my god. He set the chicken coop on fire. No, you didn't. Yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop. I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rolo got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried them under that tree. But when I came back from later, they were gone. I figured some grown-ups found them and had tossed them. Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. Alright, so now we have a, a, I guess, a bomb that we're gonna use. Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who's in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotten children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are! Prepare for blast off, loser. Well, I mean, this is just gonna kill us. Crooked. Just like the whole stinking place. Am I able to look around? No. Yeah, I think I can't go anywhere else. But, like, when I destroy this, it's gonna kill me, so... Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. This is the source? It's a dang hole? How do we smash a hole? Uh-oh. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Care? Where's Rollo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drag, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? It's really something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source, where they collect unrefined, uh... Scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boy, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. The fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is simply to flash a winning smile and manage various... Complications. Complications like us? You are a smart boy. Into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is, we all play our part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead, a role in a lifetime, and you happen to be extras. Ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional, professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Scene change! Oh, God. Here they come. Who are the two people in the suit, though? There, that's better. Deal with them. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you now. I'm an exceptional liar. 
But 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 that's far enough. Stop, you fool! Call off your goons. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can all head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. <laughs> they just walk backwards, those foxes. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. He's sweating bullets over there. What, like this? Oh, God. <laughs> Kara's like, oh, well, it's uh, not good. His face. <laughs> Ooh, whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, no, he's going to fall in the hole. Help him, Luca. There you go. Oh, got him. <laughs> oh no! You reckless child! What have you done? Luca, listen to me! Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back! Um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference! They're always listening! If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Care is out of the picture. Let's just let, just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, we both die! I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Mr. Care, you've had a long life. Why don't you do actually something selfless and just let go? Why? Why don't you just kill yourself, Mr. Care? <laughs> long life! I'll have you know I can still play 25! You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. Dum dum dum. Rippity dum dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? <laughs> oh no. Luca's hand began to cramp. Uh oh. Began to crack. Care, just let go! No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no-good bully. Like you, Care. Iggy, no. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. Dang, this kid's uh, pretty, pretty hardcore. <laughs> Luca, let me do this. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh, I don't want to let him go. Luca had no choice but to refuse or... Ex I mean, I'm not going to let him go. That's terrible. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. Oh, my God. Of course, they give me a bad ending for this. Okay, now I, now I regret everything. I should have just let go. We need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. That's Kerr. I thought it was Care. Before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror. Now, a clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn. I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. The founder. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bath. Oh was my god. Was the defeated Ugh, fine! God, what the heck is with this game, man? I think yeah, 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 whatever. Let's just go back and refuse. Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry, Iggy. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. 
good. Dang. They're gone. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Uh oh. <laughs> it's a celebration. Look at the fireworks. Okay, so that's gonna explode, right? Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly! Whoa. Well, it didn't explode this time, though. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before perennial harvest arrives. Man, I'm tripping over my words today. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend sacrificed to save this town. For a little while, anyway. Ow. Tempest liquamine is a peculiar su substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the right amount of correct energy to it, one cre can create a cryogenic cascade. Wow, this game just became very scientific. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the hole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. Some idea what that would look like. Yep. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. You know all of this stuff. Why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me. Why? What's my role? Twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn, you are going to save the world. Time travel. Like the chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. She's just gonna leave, huh? Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Oh, it's a guy. I don't know if I said she or he. I thought it was a girl. Everyone and everything he knew. And closer to destiny. To be continued in, in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. Beacon Pines, Pines Revenge Harder. Served cold. What? Second time's a charm? Oh, this is like a hint. So Chapter two Charm? What's with the dashes though? Okay, two there's a dash with revenge served cold, and then there's second times a charm. Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger <laughs> just when it was getting good? The, there's no way that's the real ending. Come on. Like this game is way too good up to this Nobody point to just end there. Refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So, chapter two. Where is chapter two, though? I mean, I still have the hum over here. I guess I might as well go there. That's the only thing I have access to. He began to hum. And in the stillness, he began to hum. Also, I'm pretty sure Iggy's fireworks probably have more energy than a torch. Like, if that torch set off the bomb, you know? Father, Luca had trouble sleeping each night. His mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. I want to know who the two people in the suits are. Out. A 
few steps toward Luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself. Through a flood of tears, she began to hum along, note for note. Hmm. Meanwhile, everyone is just watching, thinking, what is going on here? <laughs> it's a nice song, though. I guess, I mean, she really is our grandma, even though the newspaper said something different. I guess that makes sense. They, like, wrote that newspaper article to cover things up since they moved people in the town. And they just wanted to make it seem like they had died or something somewhere else. <laughs> Nun Creed's like, what is this? Am I supposed to get up? Oh, whoops, I didn't realize. The last time he heard that melody was the last night he saw his mother. How do you know? I'm so sorry, my little buckaroo. Buckaroo? The only people who call me that are my dad and your mother. Oh, that is his mom! She got... She got hit with the goo! Oh my god! Oh, that is so good! Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. Mom! Wow. Well, there's a plot twist for you. Uh, Eleanor? I thought you were... Gone? You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. How? You're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Oh my god, so his grandma did die, and this is his mom. Wow. Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. First time in a long time. Her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. Wow, okay. I did, I did not think it was going to go in this direction. That was the... That was good. That was the, that was an unexpected... <laughs> he's, just, he's just kneeling there. You don't understand. He always wins. Okay, I so I think the founder must be sharper, okay? He faked his death, all right? He faked his death because something bad happened, and he did it to get out of trouble. And now Perennial Harvest is just his front so that he can keep running things. Seven months ago, Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under Perennial Harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. Deep. Not turning back now, she raised a trembling hand. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. 
Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquamen. There Tempest Liquamen. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. Uh oh. And that is what change is all about. Oh, we're gonna blow this operation wide open here. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? This man is a liar. Excuse me. I will not. This town has a dangerous secret and perennial harvest only exists to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole damn town and moved it right under our noses. It's like that Patrick Starr thing where he's like, what if we take the town and move it somewhere else? You aren't making any sense, dear. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the ho foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated, Mrs. Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to. You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see this is a this festival is a sham. An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I am Eleanor Van Horn. Filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as the Dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry about this disruption. My, associate, my associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable so that she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You two-timing clown. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easier to look the other way. The truth is... Oh, oh, what's Solomon doing? What? That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Oh my god, no! He is sharper! He got turned into a kid! Oh my god! There's no way. Yes, sir. Take them away. No, I want them to see this. Is that sharper? Ah, the ever-tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite the thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment, plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas... I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Care? Yes, sir? It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I will take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Oh my god, he is sharper. You've done quality work for me, William. William, you can look forward to the recompense we agreed upon. Are we supposed to know who William is? Oh my god, there's just so much going on now. Founder, you are most gracious. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. You can all call me... Sharper Valentine. I knew it! Well, I didn't know it, but... Ew. Oh my god. 
<laughs> that animation's kind of funny. Hushed horror. Oh, look at him. A story about change. He's back. What? No! Ah, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Wow, he looks very scary, actually. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it would help if we set the mood. Mr. Care, be a deer and reveal the sign. The Sherper Valentine Festival. <laughs> ah, wonderful. Sherper choked out a crude squawk. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Sharper, you malicious bastard. Malice. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? Quiet settled over the crowd. What, like, is this guy planning on taking the town hostage and no one's gonna notice? I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools. You people should be celebrating my return. You clear, you're clearly lost without me, and that leads me nicely to my children. Daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourself in my absence. Squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But I... Silence, Augustus, an adult is speaking. Oh, wow, <laughs> an adult. I don't know which is worse, a, comp a son who is completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably let me down. Eris, you fail me with admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it all this time. Father, I have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I was focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, oh, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you said enough. Nonsense. The people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You are about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Care's example. When I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. Oh, wait, was William the guy who wrote the book? Yeah, that's why the name sounded familiar. There's a book that William wrote about himself, and he's that actor. Okay, that's pretty funny. Wow, this this uh, this uh game is so well connected. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Beacon Pines is mine again, and I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of perennial harvest? Ha! <laughs> you think that puffed up blatherskite could have accomplished all of this? Don, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. The crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for a spell. So I invented William Care. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick C. I knew it! He is the guy who wrote the book about himself! Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly was the roll of a lifetime. Wait, so this Bill Care was Pat C. the whole time? Now that your secret is out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. 
fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fears manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha! <laughs> young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things would have gone a bit differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this. Oh, but I can. I have won. Never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? Dang. And so Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Miraculous. Even times became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The uh -oh. end. This is wrong, but you can feel it. Right? We can't that was just lecture. the monologue ending. I thought something cool would happen. I mean, the, the reveal was pretty cool, but him just talking forever was not cool. All right, we got a new one over there. Let's see what's going on over here. <clears throat> there was malice lurking beneath those eyes. Oh, this is the evil nun creed. shoulder something wasn't right he didn't know why but something was telling luca to get out of there i just want this to all be over of course i'm sure it will all work out soon enough i should get going i told roxy i'd check for rollo at the treehouse of, of course luca you know your dad and i were good friends back in the day you can come to me with anything anything at all yeah, okay. Sure. Wait, where am I supposed to go now? Oh, okay, I need to go to the treehouse. This is the timeline where uh, Roxy shows up. Oh my god, there's Solomon. Wait, who's that other puppy? Is that like his assistant or some something? He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Oh my god. What do you have to say? These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree. This is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone... Wow. They're, uh, they're, they're acting like little kids, but he's actually just pure evil. Oh, look, it's a, it's a, what was her name again? Her mom, Nellie Modwell. Yeah, I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Whoa, you can get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Joff. It's kind of late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Bah, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. I don't want to talk to the clipboard. They're just annoying. Pig man is still just sleeping. Now I'm suspicious of every child in this town. Like, what if this kid is, like, his right-hand man or something, you know? I guess the ones I know are, are safe, but let's see if we have any more bait. Oh, yes. The crooked spoon. Tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer... Let's do it. Please be a fish. Oh, 
Who is the guy that they threw the body out? Like, we still haven't figured out who that is. Maybe it doesn't matter. Oh, it's a picture. <clears throat> it's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Oh, I used to call him Uncle. Let me see that. Huh, look at those two young fools. How did it end up at the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. So this is after they... Uh, oh, I caught all the fish. Well, that's quite a haul. Oh, this is after they've already fought. Feels like a good time to pack up. Oh, just a little longer. If things lasted forever, they might not feel as special, huh? Yes. I'll make you a deal, buckaroo. If you ever feel like you need to talk about anything at all, you just say, let's go fishing, and I'll know what you mean. Like a secret password? Yep, top secret. Neat. That's cute. What a perfect day. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a little sad that this is done. I kind of want to see if I can go into the diner as well. I think I probably have a bunch of new dishes. Uh, where is the diner? It's up here, right? It's never open. Was that? That was where I did that, right? I'm not misremembering. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was it. I really want to go back inside. I don't know how though. Maybe it'll give me another chance. Otherwise, I could always just find it um, in the uh, in the tree, I guess. All right, well, we're just waiting now. Rollo. He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo, sigh. Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. He felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Uh oh, another nightmare. Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. The source. He plopped down cross legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Made me proud, Buckaroo. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face, a place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, mm. trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. The evil That's Luca. Up to you. Oh, Come not evil. By. Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca oh. was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from the... Who is it? Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Uh-oh. Spooky sound. Chapter 5. Who is it? Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, 
Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Okay. Oh. Is that big Roro? Stop right there, Roro. Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Oh my god, it's Rolo as an adult. Who are you? Large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken goop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. <laughs> Look at his... He still has the same expression, that dumb expression of absolute confidence on his face. It's great. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. Changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. Where, where did they take you? To know, they threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big, look. Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? To the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection oh my god, Rolo doesn't realize he's an adult. What his the? Shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rolo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. Wait. So that black licorice must be what keeps Solomon or keeps sharper young then. That's probably why he goes to the candy store to get it from Nun Creed. Oh my god, it's all coming together. And that's why he has to eat so much of it. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it. This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger. <laughs> oh, he's still a little kid, though. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? Hey, Yelp. Rolo dove behind Luca. Ah! I look Beck dyed her hair because it turned white. Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Uh, no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. Yeah, she's probably like, uh, do I need to run away and <laughs> call, like, I don't know, the Predator hotline or something? I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere, so we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I can hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca? This is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool and hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh, come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. 
before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Care decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Care guy seems like a grade-A creep. Beck. He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You're not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more, a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? This next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial into something worth listening to. Mr. Care, are you there? Mr. Care? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him in immediately. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modewell seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays days and nights until it's accomplished. Good, you know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the endgame, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No new sense, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay, just for a bit. Oh? It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I, I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for what you, you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Care is the top banana at Perennial Harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom cut up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. We Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her until then. So if she's not coming out, we gotta go in and get her. A large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this'll help. 
You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mom's pH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like a blueprint to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter six. Wow. Heist. You know, it really felt like things were starting to wrap up, but now it feels like it's it's not wrapping up at all. <laughs> formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of perennial harvest. It would be no small feat. A modern facility equipped with all manner of technology. Not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The heist. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Time to recruit Iggy. Ill will and mistrust toward perennial harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was the festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. All right, quick recap. Rolo, you're going to talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. Me? Cordial is my middle name. Uh-huh. And how do you plan to explain your new... Vaguely at Rolo's sizable figure. Circumstance? Bah. She'll be so happy I'm alive she won't even notice. An involuntary giggle. And Beck, you're sure Ilona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Joff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. Each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed. Enlist the help of Joff. I don't know where Joff is. Um, I like the change in music. Very, very fitting. Maybe I can go down this way now? Nope. For a town that saw... Hmm. I mean, no one's gonna be over here, right? Cause like, this is just my house. I'm trying to think if there's anything I need from here. Don't think so. I don't know if I, we, I don't think we interrogated um, Mr. Tolliver in this timeline. So we haven't found the basement hideout. Thank God. Doesn't want to talk to me. Oracle, I need your guidance. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admire the conviction. But can he really pull through? Yes. Yes, we can. Nope. Nothing here. Uh, let's go. Oh, wait. Joff might be at the diner. And that would be great, because then that means I can go back inside. Uh, nope. That was not it. Man, I really wish they'd let me back in there. Yawn. You ever wondered why an agricultural company employs an army of survey takers? The clipboards? They say they're just trying to make us happy. Do they want to make us happy? Or just figure out what makes us happy? An important distinction. This is true. Uh, did I already come down here? Where is Joff? Hmm. Oh, there he is. Hey, Joff. What can I do you for? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry. I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're going to break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. <laughs> you see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? 
Not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you rascals. Into the sullen eyes of his would be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Hmm. Because they're crooked. Yeah, they're all crooks. Like cockroaches. Stamp one out and another one comes scurrying along to take its place. Oh, well, is that not the right word? Ready to give up, he shouted out again. Let's try junk. Yeah, what of it? Sonny, I got more junk than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Okay. I think I must be missing a charm. Hide! What'd you say? Go ahead and hide then. Oh. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. <laughs> say what you will about old Joff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I've got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gobs should cover it. Put it on my tab. <laughs> I have a tab. To seal the deal, firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. All right, Joff. Glad to have you on our side. What else we got? You got any more new spoilers, kid? No? Okay. Jump. Man, I can't... All these buildings are so different now when I look at them. Before, this was just like a corner store. But now it's like where Sharper gets his magic juice to stay young. Hey, Tish, look who it is. Luca, are you here to try to tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. Raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of... shit to each other. You're not wrong. But lately, life has kind of been... strange, you know? Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... Let's break some stuff. Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if a truce means less, breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. My, my. Luca Van Horn. I'm impressed. And after this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. Nod, Luca was off. Got him. Did you hear that, Tish? He, gazed up at Tish with a smile. he invited us to hang out at the treehouse. Aww. I never expected this day to come. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> oh my god. This is too good. She speaks. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90%. Did we get a hazmat suit? What is he dressed as? Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. <laughs> Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Rolo is is he also are they is he also a fox? Got your delivery here. A delivery? Uh I don't have anything my note in my notes about a delivery. One moment.
I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery schedules for this morning. Right. Quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asks that it be kept secret. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Classic, classic scheme, man. Whenever there's like a dictator in control, you just play on their minion sphere of him. Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about... Yeah, this is a need-to-know kind of thing. Uh, I'll just check. And flip through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form... Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late, well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? I'm... Panicked. Our harvest awaits. <laughs> sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits! <laughs> Ready to light this candle, Tish? Yup. Suck on this, perennial ham fist. What was that? Was enough for Rolo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I've got a job to do. Bye. I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. Dang. <laughs> Phew. That was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure, when in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. All right, everyone knows what to do? Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck, in case she needs some muscle. I'll head east to the Founder's office. You two be safe. Locate the Founder's office. I'm going to walk into this office, and Solomon's going to be sitting in an oversized chair. There's not even any cups for the water. That's because the office is a front, Luca. Okay. What about this one? Uh. Wait, what? You can do it. A hallway to nowhere? What's going on here? This whole building is just fake. There's nothing here. <laughs> There's literally nothing here. Oh, it's Solomon. Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes! How did you know? They brought me here and locked me up, and when they were distracted, I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. We? Yeah, Rolo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave just yet. But they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. I happened to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder? Knocking comes with consequence? Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you or else I might have missed it. Oh no, Luca. Truly fortunate. Tried the handle. Locked. Leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some kind of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock like that. And looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. She's just gonna bash the power line? <laughs> I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. <laughs> See ya. Don't mind me. Howdy. Good afternoon. <laughs> oh, man. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. 
Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Oh man, Sharper's losing his mind right now. He's like, what is this? Rolo, I'm in. Look, he has a picture of his kids, but he also threw darts at his son. That's, uh, that's disturbing. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at the locked door marked number 24601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Hmm. Pecked out his best guess, underground secrets. The screen <laughs> <laughs> Sharper's like, what is happening? How, how did you just guess that? Oh, this absurd password Rolo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types are always end up outsmarting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Rollo, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open, Luca. You never fail to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked number 13806. Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap, we've got company. Luca, must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. The screen with his finger. Here it is. 13806, go, go, go. Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. Oh no, Luca! The clipboards. Oh man, no water cups. Rollo! <laughs> They're just running around this empty building. Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in. Let's care. You can turn off the alarms. They're trapped. Satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost them. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Oh, they just got baited. Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. Nope. <laughs> Make a break for it! Just kicks him and runs off. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there! After them! Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fitz have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Oh my god. I What must be going through his mind right now? He's just like, am I really being outsmarted by like a pack of 10 year olds <laughs> well how long do you think roxy can distract them how long can keep rocks how long can roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight let's just say we've got time entering nelly's office now mom oh honey what did you do to your hair i thought you'd be happy i finally used the young chemist lab kit you sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways we need you to get out of here we who's your adult friend Oh, I'm not an adult adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars consistent with Tempest liquamine exposure? Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh, oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the hell is going on at this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under Beacon Pines in a wellspring they called The Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. Blah blah. It's like science mumbo jumbo. 
It was secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time, but it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvests came in to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists. Yes, I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Yeah, because that's what anyone would use this for if they had it. Come on, man. Use your, use your big brain. Mr. Care was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them and... And now we get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Man, these clothes were all hand-me-downs anyways. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility. I sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Care had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. That's why we gotta get you out of here. I just... like now. Wait, the vial. I finally solved the chemical equation, allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Care picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Luca, we got Dr. Modewell heading your way now. Roger that. Be careful. All right, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard drink for a hard man. Wow, even his alcohol is arrogant. I should just smother you right now. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly. You're no bother at all. <laughs> oh, this is too good. Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security systems, the time card logs, payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspected. Or maybe he leaves the key somewhere obvious, like his desk. It looks like the founder was helping Care plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with the party? Only time will tell. Still warm. He must have been in here recently. Ew, this little kid is smoking. That's just gross. Uh, I want to find the key for the cabinet. Oh, wait. Do I? Well, I guess maybe. No, I mean, that'd be silly as if the key from the memory was the cabinet key. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're going to get you out of this, I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it! Locked. That was close. When we left Nelly's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Rollo. Before we start tossing blame around. It is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me. I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Oh god, no, don't let him close to it. Everyone else huddle up. Oops. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Modewill, a brief reintroduction is in order. 
We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child, the powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest, Valentine fertilizer, all connected by a single thread. Yours truly. But that's... Searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Ha! Yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the process? With genuine delight. Very good, Dr. Modwill. Very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. And the effects went a little too far for my taste. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work, which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. May I present to you the eighth wonder of the... <laughs> wow, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hands. Actually, we do. You just did a whole ev evil villain monologue thingy about it. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Seize him! Luca! Over here! Move another inch and I smash it. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or, if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. His lips with sincerity. But I give you my word. If you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. Deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. We both know there is only one way this ends. She looked to Nellie shakily with a dispirited nod. Nellie sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it! We can't trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. What? Does she actually give Solomon it to him? pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Why would Beck do that? Come on. Mr. Care. You have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. Drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all of this thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be part of something great. But the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with the force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. Resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. After the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three keep post outside the door. Buzzed. Well, crap. Man, why'd you give him the vial back? Hey, I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just we were so close. I got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Oh, did she poison it? Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to calm my mind. Oh, I didn't realize I was walking. I can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rollo. 
You just need some time. Rolo, it's over. We lost. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at perennial harvest was growing short. So he left behind a letter with the hope it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents... Luca, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest Liquamine. Color dropped from Luca's face. Did she... Is she... She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to re reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? Oh, is that Gran? Busting us out. Chapter eight. Come up in. Ears still ringing. Gran picked herself up off the ground. Oh my God! What did they do? In the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life was gone traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing rollo with fratelli and tolliver at her side she stepped through it was a strange feeling the last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways it was in a different body they quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing she leapt forward brandishing her cane <laughs> if her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Dang. Did Gran take them out? Yeah, I guess so. Well, she had the other two as well. Gran? What are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. Hey, Mrs. Lucas Gran. That's awful nice of you, but I'm fine. Oh no, what did they? Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his feast. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We've got to stop him. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. I wouldn't be so sure about that. What did Beck do to it? With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little... Malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. Malice? The whiskey from his office? Yep, dude had an unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. You can all call me Sharpa Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh man, what's gonna happen to him? Oh. He just exploded. Now that's what I call 80 poof whiskey. Damn, dude. <laughs> I just got an achievement called Pop Goes the Weasel. At the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Naked Pines, or anywhere else for that matter, again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. 
First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter through his teeth. <laughs> he just popped like a balloon. Aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was well unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending. For yeah, this, but I'm only ready. I mean, it's not the worst one. At least it's not like an ending where we die. Let's try a different one though. I want to see what the other options do to him. What about a little junk? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigar, Ash. How did Ashes get into the vial? It was pretty easy to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, it's a bad habit anyways. Pa always says bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he... Everyone's just watching. Hmm? Did he just turn to ash? Oh, whoa. He just got Thanos snapped. See ya. Well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. Of what was once Sharper Valentine wafted into the air. <laughs> Still the numb. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His the, uh... end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines. A new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. The end. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Hmm. <sighs> I do want to see the last one. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny! Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. What's that going to do? No idea! That's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand. Band, as he dis <laughs> that animation is so funny. Oh. Holy crap, he's a baby? Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. No, he's a little baby! This is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Awkwardly cradled the squirming child. Look at his pouty angry face mother, her voice shaking with uncertainty Augustus what do we what we do what Valentine's always do what must be done I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for fa uh, young sharper that would be a great help thank you she looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes with a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had, and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome signs, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Okay. Change into my clothes. Rolo, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be there in a minute. Oh my god, is Rolo still an adult? Things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had 
moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. Well, that's nice. She out here in the garden? Oh, she's here. Yeah, she's making more jam. Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me. I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. Okay. Nothing out here. Do, 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 do. Let's go visit his dad. Although now we know that's not really where his dad is, so that's kind of messed up. Oh, good, they removed it. That makes sense. Do, 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 do. I hear you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we've got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's got shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too darn dang proud to tell you. I know. So they just left him as an adult? <laughs> So messed up, man. Oh, it's Solomon or Gus, yeah. Oh, he's smiling now. How's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Alona and Nelly for letting me help. It, I just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's next? Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us. Well, it looks like you really found your colleague. I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now, this right here. This is something I can be proud of. Aw. I'm glad he's got his own little happy ending there. Luca, get this. I managed to reel in an actual fish this morning. Seriously? Yeah. Honest to goodness. Flip flopping, swim swamming fish. I don't think I ever caught an actual fish here. Been at least seven years since I caught one. I'd say it's a good omen. What'd you do with the fish? Oh, I released it back into the pond. I'm hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Oh my god, this poor fish. Gonna be subject to eternal torment. How's the napping this morning? The most underrated part of a good nap is the view. And the view's getting greener every day. Nice. I see you decided on a name. Yep, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and Dirty Harvest is now official. I like it. It was actually Nelly's idea. There's still a lot of work to do, and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. Our motto is, go slow and fix things. Amen to that. A little, a little dig at Silicon Valley, I see. Gotta get to the treehouse. All right, go to the treehouse. I really want to go back to the diner. A little higher. Yep. A little lower. Yep. A little higher. Yep. Oh my god. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Oh my god, he's a, he's still an adult! This is so messed up! Why don't they fix him? Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine, Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. They'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want Mission Control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. 
Uh, you're right. Lead the way. Check in with Beck. Okay. Is there anything up here to look at? Maybe some new photos of everyone hanging out or something? That'd be sweet. No? Okay. Well, let's get out. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Can I go inside? Nope. All right, please, please. Oh, yes, it's open. Yawn. I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? Nope, I got everything I need. Thanks for them. I sent a draft of the story to a reporter in Capital City, and they offered me an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation that picked up an entire town of people and move them to cover up a massive illegal mineshaft, full of incredibly hazardous chemicals, sort of writes itself if you think about it. Just don't forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter. Capital City isn't that far away. I'm going to have to come back from time to time to check in, and see what sort of new trouble you've gotten yourself into. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. Ha! <laughs> we both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call it reporter's intuition. Yes. Oh, it's one of the clipboards. Hello. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with hmm. a carefree smile. She has some luggage. Is that your suitcase? That is two weeks of unencumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, and forgotten obligations. Excuse me? I'd love to place an order. With a zen -like calm. Just as soon as the lunch rush ends. I'd be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation? For the first time in years. And I've got you and your mom to thank. Why's that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are gonna fill in for me at the time while I'm gone. Just like old times. It's fine, I'll wait. Luca squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. Okay, I hope I have the rest of them. Okay, I guess I do. Good afternoon, Mr. Talov. Ah, you. Sorry, these allergies have been killing me. Haven't been able to smell a thing all day. I almost sold Mrs. Hatch a gallon of spoiled milk this morning. Got anything to help clear out these darn sinuses? Whatever it takes, I just want to be able to smell again. Uh, this one's a little less obvious. What about... some... pungent... pungent. This will clear out your sinuses, my friend. That you! Not right? I need something a little spicier. Okay. Let's try that again. Something spicy. So incendiary. And... No, 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 no. Go back. I, I screwed it up. Well, maybe double incendiary is fine. At you! What's wrong? Well, I like the spicy peppers. Put them on something that really wake. Okay, so it was it was the fish, the fish, the fish, yeah, and the peppers. There you go, man. Spicy fish sandwich. A cod for the common cold. Mmm, that's spicy and stinky. I'm sorry. I'll try again. No, don't you see what this means? I can smell again. Looks like your father isn't the only doctor in the family. Hey, Mrs. Hatch. What can I get you? Oh, I'm not terribly hungry. Something snack-sized, if you could. Mrs. Hatch was always there to see the future for us. Let's try adorable. Uh, with a smiley face on it. I call it the novella. Lovely. This just in, the last chance diner overrun by gremlins. I'm not a gremlin, I'm Luca. Mr. Wilder adjusted his monocle jokingly. I stand corrected. In that case, would you believe I have a craving for a burger? You've come to the right place. Indeed, I'll have a nice juicy burger topped with onion. Okay, that's a very vanilla choice considering the other things I've made here. Uh, a juicy burger topped with onions. Man likes his Oklahoma burgers, I see. I call it the Wilder. You know I love a good byline. Many thanks. All right, Eris. You probably want the fabulous sandwich. A well-done burger. 
When I say well done, I mean it. Well done, no problem. I fear you aren't grasping my request. I want a burger charred beyond recognition. I want it bitter and black. One burnt burger coming up. And top it with the most expensive thing you have. Oh my god. She's one of those people who just likes to ruin things intentionally, you know? Like, uh, I forget the word for it, but it's like, you take something fancy and you pair it with the most awful thing possible. May I present the row, 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 you're burnt. I can hardly believe it. You've done well. Mrs. Fratelli had caviar stashed back there. The woman is full of surprises. Very good. This will suffice. If it isn't little Luca. Hey, Uncle Nuncreed. How come you haven't been around the house lately? Well, your dad and I had a little disagreement, that's all. How's he doing? Has he mentioned me? Not really. He's been busy lately. Sometimes he doesn't come home from work before bedtime. Is that so? Well, tell him I'm thinking of him. You seem sad. Nonsense. What can I get you for lunch? Matter of fact is, I don't have much of an appetite right now. But Uncle Nuncreed, you gotta eat. I'll make you something special. That'll cheer you up. Something special. Um, something special. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much meat. Let's give him... The lavish... Indulgent. Oh, yes. The meat on meat, my friend. I've got so many stacks of meat for you. I'm sorry, Luca. It seems I still can't muster much of an appetite. Hang on. I'll make something to cheer you up. Okay, okay. We'll put the smiley face on the burger. That'll cheer him up. But what will make it special? I still think the lavish is where it's at, man. Give you a little smiley face. I call it the cheers looking at you, kid. One burger with a side of good vibes. Oh, Luca, you sweet boy. And patted Luca's shoulder with an enormous hand. You got a lot of your daddy in you, don't you? I guess so. Run along. I'll do my best to clean my plate. I have a coupon here for one free burger. What'll it be? Well, I have a lot of mouths to feed. So give me the biggest burger you have. They must eat a lot, huh? You have no idea. Oh, and throw some lettuce on top. Okay. Give you the the same thing as Nun Creed. The Giga Stack with some lettuce. I call it the too much is never enough. That should keep them at bay. Thank you. Alrighty, it looks like we've got everything we need. Let's get us to feeding these folks. Oh, I already fed everyone. You made all the food yourself? What on earth did you put on the burgers? I just used what was lying around. Oh dear, that can't be good. Thanks again, Luca. Best burger I ever ate. Surprisingly competent. Everyone seems happy. You really are a remarkable boy, aren't you? Oh yes, achievement. Satisfy all of the customers in the cooking mini game. Okay. I just wanted to, I wanted to do that one. That one was a lot of fun. Although I guess some of it, it was a lot of repeats, but that's okay. It was still a fun mini game. Young Mr. Van Horn, how's little Solomon or er, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I, so we do a lot of strolling these days. As he, uh, you know, attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination. Yeah, thankfully no. I spoke at length with Doctor Moodwell, and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, this child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I am endeavoring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job, and the whole town is ready to help out however we can. I can't wait to teach him to throw a baseball. Did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. Hello. He looked to his friends with a thankful smile. And everything that could have gone wrong, everything that did go wrong, we made it. The end. Her eyes, Ms. Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Woo! Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think you're pretty much up to speed. <laughs> yeah. 
Hello, what happened to your friend? Luca, do you want a biscotti? On the house! I don't really have time. Zariel, you gotta come and see this. I finally did it. I pulled the perfect espresso. Aw, Lumi. If I didn't know better, I would think you're proud of something. <laughs> As if I... No. It's too late. You are now officially a person that cares. Uh, what does Mr. Wilder have to say over here? How's t what's today's news that needs no one? I'll give you tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, a.k.a. William Kerr, just performed a staring rendition of the Iceman Comet at the State Correctional Facility. Oh, no. I hear there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Well, I guess he has plenty of time to work on his craft. I mean, I guess that's fine he seems he's probably happier there hey luca can you tell roxy i'll be free in an hour sure thing my dad's making me stock the shelves for the summer he said it builds character i think he meant to say it builds calluses builds character yeah it builds something all right the final time goodbye my friend the melon goodbye wow well, back for seconds if it's not too much trouble for the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose, other than to be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. But it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. I still want to believe that this dog is like one of Sharper's minions who was also turned into a child. Because they're always hanging out and he always wears a suit. So, you know, he still knows. He knows their evil plot. He can still bring him back into the fold once he grows up over the school year Kato and Bert had become close friends but did you know that when they covered up the source they found a new species of fungus yep and they are studying it in the new labs did you know that Beacon Pines is now the smallest town in the county yep close to the population before perennial harvest moved in typically went on like this for quite some time spoilers I can't believe it's over yeah, the town's really starting to turn a new leaf. The town? I was talking about Hank Atomic. I just finished the last issue. How was it? As great as always, Hank finally returned to Earth. But I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. It just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? You could ask Miss Hatch what, about what she's always reading. She seems to really enjoy it. Huh, maybe I'll do that. All these nerds in the library. <laughs> Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? Uh, do you mind not telling anyone? I've kind of got a reputation to uphold. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What I'd give to start over fresh. To experience it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go? Sure thing. That is true. It's always fun to, like, introduce people to your hobbies. Hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? Even after everything I did, you'd still... Mr. shook his head. You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Oh my god, look at all these bunnies. There's so many. With perennial harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Come on, can all. No one is too big, no one is too small for Joff's wild ride. Maybe not completely. Just one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? Me, 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 me. Well, you know, a man's got to make ends meet. Guess what? Yesterday, I saw a Dynastus Tidius, and that's good. It's great! I haven't spotted one of these in years, and at this rate, Beacon Pines is going to become the bug capital of the county. Uh, this is where it all went wrong. They cleaned up the sludge. Hmm. Where was I supposed to go? Oh, right, I was supposed to go meet Beck. 
I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning, I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're going to be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. Okay. There's a tree. My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. It should do okay in the cold of old beacon pines and thrives as things warm up. That's perfect. Well, that's nice. They've given him a tree he can plant back at his dad's grave. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot. This rides on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always said the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me. We're a trio now? Yep. I... Thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh, God. I won't be long. We'll be waiting you for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because of so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Oh, that's so sweet. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modwell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up to what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. I guess that's it. Oh man, what a what a great game that was. That that went 
all over the place and uh yeah i mean uh i really enjoyed it like it, it's like a slow burn at the start you know and it really ramps up at the end and it it's just pretty well written it's a lot of fun it's very funny yeah this was great um i guess if uh, somebody watched all of these you know thanks for playing along with me uh I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I will see you next time. Bye.